On November 4, 2010, Craig Lewis, Executive Director of the FIT Coalition in Palo Alto, California, spoke in Traverse City about feed-in tariffs. Mr. Lewis spoke at the Olson Center at Northwestern Michigan College as part of the Focus on Energy Forum for the Grand Vision Energy Network. This DVD contains his entire presentation. Before the presentation, Mr. Lewis provided an introduction to feed-in tariffs, an innovative and effective way for communities to meet their renewable energy goals. Feed-in tariffs are a win-win for utilities and developers. I started the FIT Coalition for three reasons. First of all, as a policymaker, secondly, as a project developer, and thirdly, as an investor in renewable energy projects. I've been successful in raising about $100 million for renewable energy technology companies, and about 90 million of that came from the venture capital community, and about 10 million came from the, the governmental public funding space, mostly from the Department of Energy in the form of grants. And what I realized about all of that money that I helped raise is that if we do not have end markets where those technologies can go into products that actually get deployed on the ground to produce energy, those investments will fade away and, and all of those companies will essentially go bankrupt and go away. And we can't let that happen. A feed-in tariff in the most basic form is a predefined agreement between a renewable energy developer and a utility. And what this means is that the utility agrees to buy the energy that is produced from a feed-in tariff renewable energy facility for a predefined price and using a contract that is also predefined in terms of all of its terms and conditions. And what this does for the developer is it makes the, 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 the process very transparent so the developer knows exactly what he or she is going to be getting for renewable energy that is delivered to the grid from their feed and tariff facility projects. One of the beautiful things about a feed-in tariff is that it has tremendous benefits for all of the constituents that are involved in the renewable energy space. This is not only the developer of renewable energy projects, but also for the utility that is buying that energy. The utility knows exactly what they're going to be paying and exactly what the terms and conditions of those projects are going to be, just like the developer knows. In addition, the policymakers, the regulators, are going to also benefit from this extreme simplicity of feed and tariff programs. They're not going to have to spend gobs of money designing complex programs, and they're not going to have to invest gobs of money to administer these programs either. Feed and tariffs are the most effective market mechanism for scaling cost effective renewable energy. And the reason for this is that feed-in tariffs provide a very predictable and transparent process. And what that means to a developer is that it minimizes the risk associated with deploying renewable energy. And when you reduce risk, you reduce the rate of return that is required by that developer and by the funders of that developer, the banks that are providing the actual money to go develop those projects. Everybody requires a lower return on their money than if the, when there's lower risk. So one of the huge benefits of feed-in tariffs is that the, the energy will come online at the lowest possible cost and that has a direct benefit on the ratepayers. Another really beautiful feature of feed-in tariffs is that over time, they will drive the price of renewable energy below the price that needs to be paid for traditional forms of energy. And those traditional forms of energy are gener generally referred to as avoided cost. The, the reason that feed-in tariffs have this benefit of reducing costs to the ratepayers over time is that feed-in tariffs 
have a fixed rate that is paid for a long period of time, usually 20 years. So that rate doesn't go up over that 20 year period, it stays completely flat. Now, what happens under a feed and tariff program is that projects that come online the next year will have a rate that is lower, but also fixed for 20 years. And the year after that, they'll be fixed again, but even at a lower rate. What happens to avoided cost, this is the cost of, of, of traditional energy sources. The rate is always escalating, and because it's not fixed, the, the cost of that energy traditionally has escalated by about 5% per year. So what happens is you have this crossover point where the renewable energy actually is the lowest cost energy available and the traditional energy sources continue to go up in price and the ratepayers are therefore generating a net savings from the renewable energy and this is really driven effectively in an effective way by feed-in tariff programs. Feed-in tariffs drive economic benefits in whatever region they are deployed in. So if we're talking about a city like Traverse City, for example, and we deploy a feed-in tariff here, we are going to get tremendous economic benefits in terms of job creation, in terms of investment that is attracted to the area, and in terms of local governmental tax revenue that is, that is generated off of all of the economic activity from the jobs created and the investment that is made here. When somebody in Traverse City flips on the light switch today, they are spending 100% of the cost of that energy to go outside of the region. Under a feed-in tariff program, when they flip on the light switch, any portion of energy that's coming from the feed-in tariff program will be going to providing local jobs and, and local uh, tax, local, local, other local benefits in terms of job creation, in terms of investment that gets attracted to the, to the local area, and in terms of tax revenue that is benefited to the local jurisdictional government. In terms of job creation in Traverse City, I think it would be very safe to say that we'd be looking at at least 100 direct jobs getting created. These jobs would be in terms of the construction crews that will be deploying the projects. This is in terms of the staffs that will be heading up sales offices and working in sales and support offices for those companies that are deploying the projects. And these jobs will be in terms of the operation, operations and maintenance crews that will be maintaining those projects in good working order over the lifetimes of those projects. The thing about a feed and tariff program is that the feed and tariff facility owner only gets paid for delivered energy. So they are always motivated to make sure that those projects are generating a maximum level of energy at all times. Traverse City being the first community within the state of Michigan to implement a feed-in tariff will have huge, huge guidance, set huge guidance for the state of Michigan to follow suit and to get those economic benefits that Traverse City is experiencing and make sure that those economic benefits are extended statewide. For me personally, I refuse to accept that we cannot fulfill our renewable energy objectives. I have a nine-year-old son, and I want this world to be a better place for him than it is today. And I want to make sure that I help set it on a trajectory that I can be proud of, and I can look my son in the eyes 20 years from now and say, I did my part to make this world a better place for you and for your generation and for every generation to come after you. For more information about the Fit Coalition, visit fitcoalition.com. For local information about feed and tariffs, visit tcfits.org or thegrandvision.org slash energy.